name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Very warm welcome to you all to this our Eucharist for the benefits of the Welling team on the second Sunday of Easter. You may have sight of an order of service. It contains everything uh, you'll need and the words in bold are invited to say out loud where, wherever you may be on this beautiful morning. And so we come now to a time of quiet as we still ourselves in the presence of God, thinking about those things which we shouldn't have done this past week, those things we have failed to do. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and peace, peace to his people, people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, King almighty God, God and Father, we, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that 
he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do, do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of God, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When someone dies, it can often feel as though we've been betrayed. If the person was young or endured a particularly painful or traumatic death, we can often be left questioning God. Why, Lord, did you let this happen? Of course, many people seem to use this as an argument against the existence of God, for a good God would not let suffering happen. 
but we might also feel betrayed by the person who has died. What I mean is when you love someone and you share your heart and your hopes and your dreams with them, you are vulnerable before them. And we perhaps do so with the expectation that this state of affairs will continue forever. But a day will inevitably come when we have to live without them. And there will be those moments when we think of something amusing or exciting, and we realise with an awful crushing feeling that they are no longer there for us to tell. And all the things you shared with them, which used to give you both joy, all the things you delighted in together now serve as painful reminders. Reminders that they are gone, that they are dead. We have been betrayed. The Apostle Thomas felt this. To the pain of knowing that Jesus is dead, the other apostles seem to be adding salt into an already deep and nasty wound. What seems to him to be the silly hope that Jesus may be alive. Now I am not advocating that Thomas is a modern liberal who denies the literal and physical resurrection of Christ and prefers to see the resurrection as the revival of some kind of hope among the disciples. The resurrection Thomas hopes for is the literal physical one that actually happened. But Thomas's problem is that he cannot see how this resurrection could cancel out the sorrows Jesus suffered during his passion and death. So Thomas reminds the other apostles of the hellish death which Jesus has undergone. Unless I see, Thomas says, the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. For Thomas, the pain of Jesus' death and the pain of his own loss seem to be overwhelming. He cannot see beyond his perceived betrayal. Thomas is blind. The apostles, as we read, gather in the upper room. They are frightened and the doors are locked shut. But in contrast to this fear, a power far greater than their imagining is at work, right before their very eyes, and the risen Christ appears in their midst. Jesus fulfills Thomas's wish and desire and makes him touch his wounds. It is in this moment that Thomas believes. The risen Jesus does not pretend that his sorrows and his pain and his suffering never happened. But here Thomas can see and he can touch the marks of those very sorrows, the wounds of our sin. Yet these sorrows are not sorrowful anymore. They are glorious. The same risen Jesus who told Mary Magdalene not to cling to him forces Thomas to touch his wounds. Noting this difference, the philosopher Blaise Pascal remarked, the risen Christ does not want to be touched except in his wounds. I wonder why. Is it because his wounds show us the truth that there is healing for all of our sorrows? One which does not pretend that they've never happened but a healing which draws us through and beyond all sorrows, which glorifies us and makes us live again in our bodies, unable to suffer or die, and forever able to love and to rejoice. Each day brings a fresh challenge to our lives as Christians. Each day, those most in need of the risen Lord cry out in need of spiritual support. Those who have not yet seen, but want to believe. Just as Thomas touched Christ's wounds, so too does Christ come to us, 
inviting us to touch the same glorious life-giving wounds, receiving him in the form of others who are outworking the love of the risen Christ among us today. This is all perfectly summed up in the final verse of a very famous and well-known Easter hymn. But the pains that he endured, our salvation have procured. Now above the sky he's king, where the angels ever sing. Amen. Amen. our faith now in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, we pray for all those who are in any way affected by the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for all those who have died. We pray for all those who are left feeling anxious or isolated. We pray for our health workers. And we pray particularly for those people in the world who have no access to health care. We pray for charity to be seen throughout your world. pray for governments, for the international community. We pray particularly for Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who exercise authority under her at this time. We pray for Boris, our Prime Minister, giving thanks to God for his recovery. pray also for Keir, the leader of the opposition. We 
pray for all MPs and all who are elected to represent us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for your church gathered throughout the world. We pray particularly for the churches and communities of this benefice. For St. Giles, Codicut. For St. Mary's, Welling. St. Peter's, here at St. Peter. For St. Michael's here in Warmer Green. For all saints in Datchworth. And for St. Peter's Church in Chewing. We pray for all people who live, work and worship in these parishes. Praying that in this time of isolation, we might see the risen Lord who walks among us, bringing hope and life. We pray too for this Diocese of St Albans. Praying for the senior clergy of this diocese, for the bishops and archdeacon. And we pray particularly for Alan, Bishop of St Albans, that he might be built up in faith and in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear oh, our prayer. We pray for all who are sick in body, mind or spirit at this time. Praying for God's healing and his wholeness. In a few moments of quiet, we bring before God those whom we know whether that be personally or in our church communities, who are unwell at this time. We pray for all who care for them and nurse them back to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died. Praying that they might have the comfort of the eternal joy of heaven. We pray too for all those who mourn. Praying that we might have our eyes opened by the risen life of God this Easter time. We pray particularly for all those who are mourning at the moment, who have been unable to attend funerals because of distancing guidelines. Praying that God might surround those who mourn with his love and unfailing hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. In a few moments of quiet, we bring before God our own prayers, which have not been said but are on our own hearts and minds this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our oh, prayer. prayer. When we pray, we do so in the knowledge that we do not pray alone 
but surrounded and sustained by the whole company of heaven. And so we join our prayers with theirs as we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So perhaps wherever you find yourselves right now, you might like to, to stand with those who you're with. Or perhaps if you're on your own, you might just want to, to stand where you are for the peace. What as we heard in our gospel reading today, the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. If you might like to share a sign of the peace with those in your own home. Yeah. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. And so as we come to the Eucharistic prayer, two things. Firstly, I said uh, a few weeks ago when uh, I last presided uh, virtually on, on a Sunday, is that this prayer is impossible uh, without, without you. So I invite you, wherever you find yourselves, to perhaps pray as, as I'm praying these words. And I know it's very painful and it's difficult for all of us as we can't gather at the moment as a church community. But together with our prayers, we can gather and we can give thanks to that good God who brings light and light out of darkness. Another thing you'll see is that uh, today uh, we're outside. Uh, thank, thank God uh, for good weather uh, today. And uh, a lot of clergy, there's quite an interesting cartoon uh, in the Church Times this week of uh, different uh, clergy uh, presiding virtually in different settings in their home. And in fact, on such a great and, and glorious day, uh, why not be outside giving thanks to God for his good creation. Of course, Eucharist, uh, the Eucharistic prayer is the great prayer of thanksgiving. And so that's exactly what we do as we celebrate these holy mysteries today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, 
Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Giles, St. Peter, St. Michael, and all God's holy saints and angels, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. of So perhaps where you are now, you might like to say that prayer, that act of spiritual communion, which is at the top of page 11. Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life, and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin, and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.